Hi, in this second video we're going to explore how to set up a navigation controller using only a nib file or a zip file. In the first uh, video on navigation controllers we did this with a storyboard and we saw that it was very simple. It is very simple here, but there's a little bit more detail and doing it this way shows you the the uh, what is actually happening behind the scenes with the app delegate. So I've got a first view controller scene here. And what I've done is I've taken an empty template and created a new file, which was a uh, an instance of an Objective C class UI view controller, and I've just called it first view controller, and I've used this checkbox with zib for user interface, and that creates this first view controller .zib file. I've also drug a button here uh, to this, but let's explore first how the app delegate places this view controller into its window when into a navigation controller when the application is run. So in app delegate.h, I've imported this first view controller.h file so that we get that class, and I've set up a property of that first view controller, and I've just called that first VC. I've also set up a property, a strong non-atomic property like the other, uh, for UI navigation controller, and I've called it navc. Now a zip files uh, program's app delegate looks differently than a storyboard uh, application's app delegate. And the main difference is here in the application did finish launching with options. The first thing this does is it sets up self.window and it allocates a UI window. UI window is a subclass of UI view. So it really is just a UI view. It's the main application window. So it allocates this window and it initializes it with a frame. And that frame is the main screen's bounds. So we get a full screen window. That's all we do there. And then we see this uh, this comment that says override point for customization after application launch. The template gives us this comment in a nib file setting. I've instantiated the first VC <clears throat> as a first view controller allocated and in initialized with a nib name of nil and a bundle of nil. Now I could initialize this with a nib name of an NS string first view controller without the zip file extension and then a bundle of nil and it would do exactly the same thing. The reason I can initialize this with a nib name of nil is that in firstviewcontroller.zib two things are set up. First of all the files owner has been set to firstviewcontroller and secondly files owner's view points to this view, the view in the nib file. And so with those two things set, I can say take a default nib name. And that default nib name is set up in the first view controller. And it's flagged by saying in it with nib name of nil. A bundle of nil just means this application's bundle. Okay. The next thing I've done is I've set that view controller's title. And that's the title that will appear in the title bar of that view controller's view in a navigation controller. And I've just set that to be first view. Then I've instantiated the navigation controller as an object of type UI navigation controller allocated and initialized with its root view controller property set to self dot first VC. And what this does is it sets the view controller up as the navigation controllers first displayed view controller or root view controller. The next thing I've done is I've set the Windows view controller to the navigation controller. And so the first thing displayed in the window will be the navigation controller, which will display its root view controller's view, which will be the first view controller's view. Finally, I've made the window key invisible and returned yes. And so let's look now at the zib. So now, what at this point, what we have will we'll display this view. So let's go ahead and look at that. And it does. So we can see the title has been set, and we see this button go to second view. All right, we won't click that yet, because there's some things that have to happen. The next thing I did 
is I created a new file that is a view controller and I did that a little bit differently. I've created an Objective-C class as a view controller called Second View Controller, but this time I left this unchecked. Now it really doesn't matter. We could go ahead and create the zib for the user interface, but I wanted to show you how to bind a zib that was not created at the same time as its view controller. So I've called that Second View Controller without a zib. So here's Second View Controller, and then here is Second View Zib. A different color than the first view. Okay. Now, two things have to happen here. First of all, the file's owner for the zib, and remember the zib is just the view. The view controller needs to be the controller for this zib. So this zib's file's owner is the view controller. Well, right now it says that its class is NS object. That's wrong. We need to set that class as being second view controller. So we'll save that. And then the files owner's view property, the second view controller's view, has to point to the view object in this zip file. And so with those two settings done, my nil pointer for init with nib name nil now points to second view dot zib. So now in first view controller, I have added a couple of properties. First of all, I've imported second view controller and made a property out of, out of that. A second non-atomic strong property called second view controller second VC. And then I have a action method push second view. In my implementation, I need to synthesize second VC. Now, if I just push second VC, I'm pushing a nil object because it has not been instantiated. So I override second VC's getter to instantiate it if it doesn't exist. So here I say if not second VC, and this is my override of the getter, this method, if not second VC, I want second VC equal to an allocated second view controller initted with a nib name of nil, again, because the nib name has a files owner of second view controller, I can do this, with a bundle of nil and then set the title on the second view controller to second view and return it. So now I've lazily instantiated second VC by using the getter. One thing we do not want to do is use self dot in a getter. If we do this, if we say if not the self dot second VC, at this moment it will call the getter. And that is a recursive loop. So this is bad. It will just continue to call that getter. So we need this. Uh, we omit the self here. Now in my push second view method, I need to get to the navigation controller. First view controller is already in the navigation controller's navigation stack. It was made the root view controller. It is the first view controller that the navigation controller will display. So first view controller by that default kind of setting has a property called self.navigationcontroller and that points to the navigation controller that owns it and then we call a method push view controller and then we push the view controller that we want to push on top so here we're pushing self.second view controller in an animated style so as soon as it hits this self.second view controller it calls the getter instantiates it returns it and then pushes that view controller onto the navigation controller stack and it will be displayed at that point. So let's go ahead and run this and see how that works. So again we have our first view. If we click go to second view. Here we have our second view. It's green. It's titled second view because in the getter I've titled it second view and then back to first view and I have that navigation controller stack. So that's great. We could add a third view by instantiating it within second view controller and pushing the third view on and so on and so forth. The navigation controller stack really is not a stack in a traditional computer science sense. It's really just an NS array of view controllers. 
the first view controller in that NS array, the object at index 1, so to speak, is the first view controller in this case. So it, that, it, it really doesn't matter. It could be second view controller. It could be 19th view controller. Uh, we can also treat this NS array in ways that we can treat any NS array. We can reorder it. We can do things like that. We can change the root view controller that's in the navigation controller. And we can push any view controller at any time that is in that NS array of view controllers. And these are all things that we'll be looking at as we continue to use navigation controllers throughout the course. Navigation controllers are used when we have a hierarchical uh, kind of mindset when we develop our application. One thing leads to another, to another, to another. Uh, instead of uh, being able to select uh, among multiple options of view controllers. When we need to select among multiple options of view controllers at the beginning of an application, we usually use a UI tab bar controller. But that's a different animal, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Thank you very much.